good evening to all i am dr k ramasamy dean agricultural engineering of kalanyar karnanadi institute of technology payambattu at the outset on behalf of kalanyar karnanadi institute of technology i hope that you will come all of the participants our distinguished guest speaker dr prasad tulkarni of university of agricultural sciences raichur karnataka faculty staff members and the coordinator of this session dr vasandi of this institute okay before going to this session of webinar on aquaponics i will introduce about our chief guest a few words about him he is the senior assistant professor of university of agriculture sciences he graduated from maharashtra agricultural university and then he did his post graduation in mtech agriculture engineering of uh, this specialist of soil and water conservation engineering both mtech and phd then he has a focused research area in the engineered constructed wetland system a unique system of wastewater treatment technology which is of a novel technique number 2 he is also now developed the aquaponic system into the wastewater treatment so he has more than 10 years of experience and he has around 6 externally funded projects research projects of his credit to that he had additionally 18 research papers in the same area in which he is working for the past 10 years so with this little background let me go on the topic of this webinar aquaponics after all aquaponics is nothing but an integration of aquaculture and hydroponics aquaculture you all know it is nothing but it is nothing but a system in which we grow fish and aquatic creatures in water and hydroponics is a system in which plants are grown without soil so when you integrate both then you call it as aquaponics so whatever the waste created in a water body in a fish growing water body or any aquatic creature water body which is being fed into a hydroponics wherein the nutrients are friendly available what we call in a pollution technology as a nitrification so that nutrients are being taken by the plants thereby the water gets purified then again it is recycled to the same aquaculture system so this is the in brief about the aquaponics in short i can tell or in nutshell it can be considered to be an automatic recirculation system of its biologically as well as little bit man made also so with this uh, background the aquaponic system will give you two incomes to the farmer one is by fish growth number two is on the plant production system third one is water purification system partner a person of this green revolution we made the pollution but now we want to remedy come out of the pollution for which this could be a good technology for the years to come for the next generation the farmers are facing crisis of the income thereby they can have a double income and also pollution control of waste water purification in short i can tell this will add a very good value to the integrated farming system both in garden lands and also in wetlands there are a lot of implications available but we can let say this is a very unique system 
in which we have to go a long way in India. So for which our keynote speaker, chief guest, has pioneered some work in this area. Let us hear some of the novel features and important points of this technology which is going to have a role in the next generation, thereby we can have a saving of our farmers. So with this small background introduction, I will try to hand over the session to our chief guest, Dr. Prasad Kulkarni of University of Agricultural Sciences, Raichur in Karnataka. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. <coughs> I firstly uh, congratulate uh, KIT Koyitur, the organizers of uh, this uh, very uh, highly knowledgeable workshops, online workshops, in this type of pandemic situation which is occurred in India, as well as the whole world. And this is need of uh, today's uh, time uh, so uh, i also uh, uh, very proud and very uh, honored to be a, a part of uh, this uh, online webinar series by kit koimtur and i thanks uh, the organizers and uh, uh, dr k ramaswamy sir uh, for giving me this uh, such a nice opportunity uh, and this, uh, now I will, I will proceed to my uh, topic that is uh, uh, aquaphonics. Already, uh, uh, Dr. Ramasamy sir has given brief description about this. Uh, we will deal it in depth. So, why I have selected this topic, uh, then what are uh, the uh, different components of this aquaphonic system, how these are uh, configured, then how, what is the flow process within this system, then uh, how it works, uh, what are the benefits, what are the limitations of this system. All these things we, we are going to discuss in this webinar series, webinar uh, talk. So uh, I will start with uh, this topic. Uh, I hope uh, everybody can uh, see the slides, whatever uh, being shown on the uh, screen. So my talk is on uh, aquaphonics, a next generation integrated farming system for doubling the farmer's income. This is, uh, we can use this system for taking a lot of uh, problems which are being faced by the farmers nowadays. Uh, this slide shows you uh, the different problems uh, what are uh, the present farmers facing. So main the problems are due to the basic resources. Those are water, soil and land. We know India is facing like at present India is uh, categorized under water scarce country. Water scarce countries are the countries uh, whose uh, per capita water availability per year is less than 1700 meter cube and it is uh, it is like uh, extrapolated that this India is going to become water stressed very soon means there is still water scarcity will be uh, there and this is due to increasing population a uh, lot of other factors are there this is one point. Second point, intersectoral water conflicts. So uh, whatever available water, potable water in India, it is divided into three major sectors, domestic sectors, industrial sector and agriculture sector. Most of the water, almost 60 to 70 to 80 percent water is being diverted to agriculture, was by diverted to agriculture, but now due to urbanization and all other factors the agriculture share of this potable water is getting reduced 
and it is being diverted to other sectors so uh, it is uh, again in future it is said that the water from agriculture is also going to be reduced and water pollution nowadays this is again accelerating the problem this is related to water related to soil we have lot of soil salinity and alkalinity problem which restricts the growth of proper growth of crops soil erosion due to various may uh, various uh, uh, factors like wind water uh, all other factors are reducing the soil depth you uh, can say the actual uh, beneficial soil depth is being reduced which is causing the fertility issues within that zone of uh, crop growth root growth so this is these are the soil problems and land problems are due to urbanization land degradation and water logging uh, land fragmentation to due to increase in the uh, population so all these basic uh, resources which helps or which support the agriculture indian agriculture is being deteriorated and the effect of all these things are on food security of the country now coming to the food security previously food security is just uh, the quantity of food which feeds the total population that's all but now the definition is changing the nutrition value of the food has to be considered while defining the food security so it is not like only just production of feed or food we have to produce the nutritional nutritionally high like the food which is having high nutrition okay so uh, there are some factors which are also affecting this food security in addition to this water soil and land this is unpredictable weather different pests and diseases then lacks of resource management water resources are there it is not being optimally managed due to this all these things there is a crop failure okay the climate send climate change again uh, accelerate the crop failure so what is the effect of all these things the produce which is uh, which the farmer is growing in a field which is having marginal quality it is not up to the mark or up to the quality of uh, proper consumption there is a lot of pesticide residues in the food and all other things are there which causes very ill health effect in human being then farmers are uh, mostly depend upon uh, single farm produce like suppose he is producing some crop if that crop is not properly uh, produced or not properly marketed or not properly sold out uh, it is very difficult to farmer for the farmer to sustain so the uh, even he is investing lot of amount in in uh, fertilizers and pesticides to save the crop so due to all these things farmers are under debits and debits you know what is the worst effect of debits lots of farmers are committing suicides this is uh like worst condition in india okay so tackle all these uh, problems a uh, novel idea is being uh, like it is very old uh, uh, uh unofficial it is very old idea but officially on the record it is just 20 to 30 years back it is firstly uh, designed and fabricated so we'll see what is that this is a aquaponics okay it is sustainable solution for the problems what we have discussed already so it uh, it solves the water related problems it solves soil and land degraded uh, degradation related problems also it solves the crop related problems so how it solves water related problems uh, we cannot generate the water that's that is there but we can uh, we can manage the water properly so that we can enhance the water productivity that is uh, profit gain per unit water used that we can enhance then uh, if there is a problem with soil and land we can go for soil less culture on uh, maybe degraded land also we can use for this plus uh, if you have lo uh, very low uh, area land we can go for vertical farming so that we can again uh, get the multifold income from that so we can solve this soil and land related problems uh, similarly crop related problems how we can solve instead of being depending upon on one uh, single uh, uh, crop yield crop produce if the farmer is going for integrated farming system that is combination of all the farming systems available 
like agriculture, horticulture, poultry, duck farming, fish farming, rabbit farming. There are lots of other even sheep farming. So lot of other uh, things if you integrate together, that is called as integrated farming system. So suppose one system fails, other systems are there to support the farmer. So farmers, uh, we can say livelihood is going to be stabilized. It will uh, not uh, like the farmer will not face insecurity. Okay. So uh, in aquapony system, we can achieve this. Aquapony system is uh, defined here as it is one of the category of high tech IFS that is integrated farming system that combines conventional aquaculture and hydroponics. Okay. So aquaculture uh, is nothing but it is raising the aquatic animals such as fish, cat, crayfish, prawns uh, in uh, fish tanks and hydrophonics is cultivating the plants in water. So aquaculture faces a problem of disposal of that water, wastewater which is being generated. That water is very highly, highly nutritious and that uh, having very high nitrate content, phosphate content that can be uh, used for growing the crop. So that uh, water is uh, uh, diverted towards cultivating the uh, crop in this system. So here you can see uh, aquaculture plus hydroponics will give rise to aquaponics. So we see uh, the main components of aquaponics. What are the main components of aquaponics? Uh, first is RAS, that is recirculating aquaculture system. So, uh, and next is hydrophonics, that is soilless cultivation. What is recirculating agriculture system? Here you can see on a, uh, a slide, there is one fish tank and uh, where the fishes are being reared and here uh, we are giving feed to the fishes and uh, there is air pump for aeration and this water will contain, after some days, this water will contain high amount of nitrogen uh, in the form of ammonia and that will be toxic for the fish. So this has to be disposed somewhere. In RA system, this is pumped and this is passed through clarifier and biofilters. So clarifiers will move the solid uh, matter content of the fish water, the aquaculture water and it, the chemical content of the water uh, in the form of ammonia which is toxic for the fish is converted to uh, nitrite and then nitrate and nitrate is uh, less toxic or very uh, we can say it is negligible for the fish and this water again uh, came come back to fish pond. So this is recirculating aquaculture system. Secondly, we have hydrophonic system. So here we have uh, we can say one sump or reservoir of water and here we have fertilizers which are uh, being dissolved. This will be liquid fertilizers which will be dissolved in water and there is aeration to enhance oxygen content of water and this water which is high in nutrition and high in oxygen content will be diverted to the crop culture. So this culture will be soilless. Maybe uh, like some media will be used uh, instead of soil. Media will be like inert media, something like that, coir pith or something like that, that I have listed further. Then we can use uh, as a nutrient film or we can use deep bed culture for uh, as a, a crop growing structure. And the drainage from this structure will again go back to a uh, reservoir, water reservoir. So whatever nutrients content in that water will be absorbed by the plant and the water which is free of nutrient will again go back to the hydrophonics reservoir. So uh, adding all the benefits of hydrophonic system and aquaculture system and uh, subtracting the uh, uh, limitations of both the systems, both systems are combined and formed an aquaphonic system. So here you can see there is a fish tank with lot of fishes here. There is a air pump which dissolves the oxygen in the water and we are feeding the fish. Uh, then the fish excreta plus the feed which will be diverted this water will contain ammonia uh, by the fish this will be diverted to the crop beds and in crop beds the ammonia which is in uh, which is in toxic in nature it will be converted to nitrates and uh, nitrites and nitrates 
you, uh, by the nitrifying bacteria in the presence of oxygen and this nitrate is very uh, suitable for crop uh, like crop will consume it very easily and remaining water which is free of nutrients free of toxic chemicals will go out it will be drained back to a, one sum and this water will be pumped back to aquaculture tank so this is a closed circuit system where the same amount of water is used for cultivating the fish for raising the fish and for cultivating the crop here different types of crops okay so uh, water productivity and the uh, as there is no requirement of additional fertilizer very less fertilizers additional fertilizers are needed here so this is uh, we can say water productive very highly water productive system and highly resource productive system uh, so what is the process uh, happening here actual flow chart of the system uh, here you can see there is a fish tank aquaculture tank and it goes to one so solid removal or clarifier uh, the removed solid will be used as a composting compost for formation of compost and the liquid will go for biofiltration in the biofiltration tank there may be aeration or uh, uh, already there is oxygen content in the water using that oxygen the nitrifying bacteria converts the ammonia into nitrate nitrite and nitrate and that uh, nitri nitrate will be passed to hydrophonic system here all the nitrates will be consumed all other fertilizers in the water chemicals will be consumed by the plants and the water which is free from the chemical will again go to the sump if needed the oxygen is dissolved in that uh, using some aerators and that water is again going to the aquaphonus uh, that is fish uh, culture so this is a closed circuit system uh, there are different types of uh, this aquaponic system, different uh, configurations we can say. Uh, first configuration is, as I told, media bed aquaponics unit. Media bed means there is a, a artificial trays will be there. The trays will be there. In that tray, there will be media field. And uh, we can see here, here we have uh, on extreme left side, we have a tank where the fish are being reared. From this tank, water goes uh, water goes to the water supply to the, uh, uh, this uh, trays where the plants are being grown, and the drainage from these plants will go to the sump given here, and from sump again water is pumped back to aquaculture system. So uh, these plants here, they will take up the nutrients or whatever chemicals are there, and it will be going back to the fish pond safely. So here you can see there is a, a picture of already constructed structures are here. So this is the fish pond, and this is these are the growing beds, and this is the sum. So sizing of all these growing beds and fish pond size it depends upon the area on which we are growing the crop. This is also one uh, type of uh, like taro crop is grown here. Then here uh, some vegetables are grown. We can do it on backyard of our house, or we can do it on terrace also. Uh, some of the media which is very famous here are volcanic gravel uh, where we can grow the we can, we can uh, this supports the uh, uh, we can say crop these are volcanic gravels uh, then limestone gravels expanded clay coconut fiber this is very famous soil fiber we are using uh, as a soilless medium uh, the effectiveness or we can say the nitrifying uh, nitrification process depends upon the area surface area available where the bacteria colonies will be formed uh, and pH is very important if pH is neutral it is very the process is very fast in uh, in presence of oxygen okay so these are the commonly used medias we are uh, uh, doing we are using in the system uh, there are some uh, pros and cons of the system as it is you can see it is very simple system anybody can uh, construct the system uh, it is very ideal for who are just starting this aquaponic system it is very ideal uh, and uh, with this we can gain some knowledge and we can go for other systems uh, it is a little bit heavy system like uh, we have to use lot of media and all these things so it is uh, comparably heavy than uh, other systems uh, so uh, here if you run the system using solar uh, power the electricity cost will be very less uh, so it will it will become very economical uh, second system which is very
சார் ஹலோ சார் ஜஸ்ட் யூ கேன் ஷேர் த ஸ்கிரீன் சார் இஸ் இட் ஓகே ஹலோ கேன் யூ ஹியர் மீ ஓகே சார் ஒரு <laughs> where the fish are being raised and from this fish pen fish pond water will go to the filter where we have primary filter clarifier that is solid waste will be removed and there will be nitrifying uh, 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 the filter which is having bio reactors which uh, converts this ammonia into nitrate which is usable for the crop and this nitrate rich water which is also included uh, phosphorus and phosphates and if needed some other micronutrients can be added there and this nutrient rich water will be fed to the nutrient films which is uh, the number of pipes you can see in the diagram uh, the holes are there and on, in each single hole there will be single plant and this is a very beneficial system uh, and commercially used uh, by the crop growers you can see here uh there is a vertical wall system for growing the same um, same you can see the pipe is here with holes and crops are uh, planted on the pipe here you can see there is a frame vertical farming a frame is there where lettuce are uh, grown here also you can see there are square pipes on which the uh, lettuce are grown and this all these systems are fed by the water from the aquaculture which is uh, treated water that is nutrient rich water from the aquaculture system it is having uh, more benefit than the media based system benefits uh, as it is more uh, we can say cost effective system because less uh, rigid structures are here uh, we can it is very ideal for vegetable growing vegetable is uh, uh, very efficient using this system as i told it is a uh, lightweight system can be used can be constructed on rooftops also there are some uh, drawbacks of this uh, we can see here in compared of in comparison of uh, this uh, media based system uh, the evaporation process of water within the system is very less here okay? because no water is exposed to the atmosphere uh, just if you use this fish pond no water is exposed to the atmosphere right? so minimum evaporation will be occurred here there are some limitations like we have to have uh, uh, like uh, uh, for very complex very efficient filtration system must be there uh, the pumps and uh, uh, aerators is are mandatory there so if you replace uh, the electricity by the solar power it will become more efficient then third system we have deep bed culture that is also known as bed uh, here uh first two comp- compounds are same that is uh, uh fish pond and filtration unit it is same uh, only the third system that is hydroponic compound is uh, differently configured here here we have canals some small channels where the uh, nutrient rich water is filled up to some level mostly 30 cm uh, depth we are filling the water and above this uh, water we are keeping the floating uh, platforms and on floating platforms we have the holes where the plants are being so being transplanted in the sense and uh, the water which is highly nutritious that uh, water will be that nutrition will be taken up by the plants and uh, the nutrient free water will again uh, send back to the aquaculture so this is again one of the system uh, this is also very simple system uh, as uh, uh, as even uh, similar to this uh, nutrient film technique this here also uh, there is very less exposure of uh, water to the atmosphere so low pressure is very less water loss is very less in this case uh, next 
uh, can see here some of the photographs of the rat system. You can see this is the raft. It was called the raft system, floating and water. Uh, some plants are grown on the raft. Here also you can see different uh, varieties of lettuce are grown. You can see this is the raft, this is the floating uh, platform. How many of the plants are uh, uh, grown here? This is the uh, channel where the water, you can reach water will be kept. So this is very uh, like uh, for visualization it is very simple technique but design of system is a little bit complicated. Uh, this is also having uh, high advantages that is the most effective method in media where uh, we are going for large scale cultivation. This is very good system. This can be automated very easily. Uh, then uh, we can uh, we can say uh, cushion the water quality because uh, uh, volume of water is very high here. Then uh, uh, it can withstand the electricity problems also because the water will be there. And so roots are always in touch with water. There is not really much we uh, uh, can say uh, these are limitations due to electricity failures. Uh, but it needs high dissolved oxygen uh, in the water. And if the water remains for a long time in this same chamber. There will be a uh, starting of denitrification process and it will be toxic for the plant. So, after two to four hours, we have to change the water of this stream, drain out the water and uh, place the new water inside the stream. This is very important here. Uh, also, we have to place aerators in each channel to aerate the water, which will uh, accelerate the nitrification process. So, these are uh, some pros and cons of the same system. Uh, here you can see this is a laboratory scale uh, aquaponic system. Uh, in this system, these three uh, types of configurations are combined here. Here you can see this is the NFT. Uh, part A is NFT, part B is uh, uh, media bed system, and part C is deep uh, water quality cultivation. And here you can see fish pond. So, this is just for uh, demonstration purpose uh, uh, system. And the major component of the system is. Uh, uh, in, in addition to this hydroponic uh, part, we have to have pond, we have to have, if we are using solar uh, system, we have to have solar panels and filters are very mandatory here. Okay. So, uh, now in addition to this, you will see uh, that there are biological components of the system, aquaponic system. So, biological component includes the fish, the uh, bacteria, and the plants. These are three biological components. and uh, we have already seen how, uh, because all these three biological components actually the actually support or actually if you uh, combine it, if you balance it properly, the system efficiency will be very high and uh, the farmers will get very high income from the given uh, system or given design system. So system balancing is very important as I told. Here there are, uh, I give you the four diagrams of system balancing. In first diagram, here you can see here the fish biomass or fish is available exceeds the biofilter or uh, the capacity of biofilter. So in this case, what happens if uh, the biofilter capacity is not being like it is exceeds the biofilter capacity, there will be uh, uh, like treatment will be very less and it will be toxic to plants. And plants, if they are not absorbing sufficient quantity of nutrients, it will be toxic, toxic uh, to the fish also. There is possibility of dying of fish. So this is not uh, recommended. Secondly, if the fishes are more, biofilter is working correctly, but the plants are less. This is also not recommended because nutrition produced is high than the nutrition required. So not all the nutrients are being absorbed and some nutrients will go back to fish and it will be dangerous for our fish. In contract, contract trade, you can see here the fish population is less and uh, plant population is high. In this case, what happens? The nutrient required for the plants are not fulfilled by the fish. So, plant will not get uh, proper yield and quality of yield will get reduced. So, properly balanced system we have designed, we have to consider such that both the nutrient requirement uh, of the plant should get fulfilled using the uh, fish, uh, the nutrient availability in the aquaculture water. This is very important. This is said to be a well balanced system which, we, which is supposed to give very high yields. So, the water quality in this uh, system we have we must maintain or get a maximum income. Is, uh, 
uh, like it depends upon the uh, type of fish you are rearing, type of plants you are uh, cultivating, the bacteria availability. Uh, so all these things are there. Uh, it is uh, major factors. One major important factors uh, considered is temperature, pH, ammonia. That is uh, the nit nitrogenous uh, compounds and uh, dissolved oxygen. In addition to this, we have to also consider the hardness of water. For different fishes, uh, we have different uh, temperature requirements. Uh, for pH also, it is different. Uh, mostly, the pH should be neutral. So, as uh, if you combine all these things, if you take the average. Uh, the aquaponic system as a whole needs temperature around 18 to 30 degrees Celsius, uh, neutral pH 6 to 7, ammonia should be less than 1, nitrate should be, nitrite should be less than 1. It should uh, nit ammonia and nitrate should uh, be equal to 0 almost. It should tend to 0. And nitrate nitrate, which is useful for amount of fertilizer, should be more. It is 5 to 150. Dissolution should be more than 5. It should be almost 8 to 10. In addition to this, uh, the water hardness should be there. This maintains the pH values. So water hardness should be 60 to 140. So pH value or in this range is most because slight changes in pH value, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 uh, unit pH change, the fish will get a lot of problem uh, 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 according to their health. So pH is very important in this case. pH can dissolve oxygen. Uh, under this uh, cultivation uh, practices, we can grow lots of crop. There is no much limitation. Uh, just uh, uh, if you skip that field crops, all other crops can be grown here. Vegetables, lots of vegetables can be grown. Lots of herbs can be grown. Uh, fruit crops, strawberries, melons can be grown. Most of the flowers which are grown in garden can be grown here. Fodder crops, uh, you can say green fodders. Oak, maize, barley that can be grown, uh, sprouts and uh, the micro bricks. Nowadays, micro bricks are uh, gaining a lot of um, uh, you can say market. So, micro bricks is just the next uh, you can say stage of the sprouts, and this will give very high protein value uh, in food. Then, medi some medicinal plants and aromatic plants also can be grown here. Then, plant nurseries also can be. Uh, uh, established using this aquaponic system. So there are lots of uh, crops based upon the climatic condition and uh, localized, uh, uh, you can say, weather. You can select the crop. Uh, also, for selection of the crop, market uh, study is very important. We must study the market, where we can market, because we are investing a lot of money for while establishing system. So market, market should be uh, in of the same proportion. So market has to be uh, first uh, venture. Uh, the fish species which are most common in aquaponics are tilapia, carp, catfish, trout, uh, then largemouth bass and frogs. Uh, in which the tilapia, tilapia and carp, these two varieties, these are robust varieties. Means any condition of water, even in wastewater, also this variety comes very well. Uh, catfish and trout, these are commercial varieties. Uh, prawns, uh, mostly river prawns. This fetch very high value. Uh, then even tilapia also fetch uh, fetch very high value. Nowadays the tilapia is being genetically modified. That is gift species has come. That is genetically uh, uh, improved farm tilapia, which is uh, of short term. Uh, like we can achieve the market value, market uh, weight uh, within very short short period. So that is also a lot of modifications are going on in fish also. Uh, all these species can be. Uh, growth in aquaculture form uh, uh, of aquaponics. Uh, there are some stocking density. Stocking density means per meter cube of water, how much kg of fish we have to uh, grow, we have to rear. Okay. So uh, if the, the you can say good exchange of like water quality is good and good uh, water exchange is there, periodic water changes are there, we can go for 10 kg per meter cube of per thousand liter of water. If we have aeration facility with the uh, with uh, water exchange, we can go for 15 kg. If we have all other conditions uh, supported to the agriculture growth, we can go for 125 kg per meter cube of uh, water. So uh, on an average, it is considered that 20 kg of 
fish for better growth properties optimum optimum value in other sense uh, how much feed has to be given to the fish because uh, feeding of fish is very important uh, and uh, once if you feed within 30 minute how much fish can eat only that much amount we have to put to the fish after 30 minutes we have to remove all the feeds which is remaining there because this may uh, get uh, convert, get converted into toxic substances which affects the feed, uh, fish health okay so uh, do uh, uh, if you follow the researches regarding fish feeding uh, we can say that almost 2 uh, to 3 uh, sorry yeah 2 to 3% of the body weight of fish has to be uh, supplied uh, that much amount of feed has to be supplied per day to the fish twice a day okay twice a day but not only one single uh, time you have to feed but feed twice a day mostly while uh, in the evening you have to feed and early in the morning also you have to feed okay uh, then uh, this there is one more method of feeding the fish uh, there is one more thumb rule we can say if we are uh, growing the green vegetables if we are planting the green leafy vegetables we can uh, uh, we can feed almost 40 to 50 grams of feed per square uh, per square meter of uh, crop area and if you are growing the veg uh, fruity vegetables like tomato uh, we can say brinjal that is eggplants or cucumber in that case we can uh, uh, we can uh, add some 50 to 80 grams of fish feed per square meter of uh, the crop area so these are some uh, rules for feeding the fish and which is very important because the fish uh, the feed which is uh, fed to the fish tanks uh, if it is not consumed properly this will re remain as a solid waste and it has to be removed uh, periodically so it is very uh, important to uh, feed the fish very properly uh, okay so this is all about uh, the present aquaponics uh, systems uh, we have discussed what is aquaponics how it works what is the process in aquaponics what are the different components of aquaponics then uh, we also seen uh, uh, how like what are the biological components of aquaponics uh, what are types of crops we can grow in aquaponics what are the fish varieties we can grow in aquaponics uh, then how the stocking density has to be maintained and how the fish feeding has to be done all these things we have discussed here uh, now we are going towards the advancements in aquaponics uh, what is going on Uh, in the countries other than the India, very de developed countries, uh, there are they are uh, developing the green factories. So as we are uh, growing the uh, vegetables and crops on field, they have the factory-like structures, like workshop-like structures, where uh, all these plants, vegetables, everything will be grown inside the building. The building is climate controlled. Every climate parameters like humidity, temperature, light density. Uh, everything will be controlled in that uh, uh, climate control building, and all the crops are grown in that building itself. Uh, this is one uh, we can see on screen. We can see there is one uh, building uh, uh, like plan. This is from Chicago. They, they are planning this building in Chicago. Uh, then these are some actual green factories available in uh, some in Hong Kong and some in Chicago. Uh, then we have uh, this inside this uh, there is actual they are uh, growing the plant their vegetables and these are being supplied to the city uh, here we can see the view inside this uh, growing factories in fact you can see you can see here we have vertical garden uh, we have seen we already discussed what is vertical farming this is vertical farming so there will be lots of layers of multi story Farming. So, once suppose you have one uh, square meter area with you, and you have some five uh, floors of vert uh, vertical floors. So you can grow uh, the crop which is uh, being supported for five square meter. So like that, uh, if small using small area, we can go for very uh, high amount of effective land to grow the crop. So here also you can see there is a multi stored story uh, crop. Room uh, in the trays. So this all building is climate controlled. This is inside the view of the buildings. Uh, this is also one of the building in uh, I think Japan. Uh, 
these are the trees where the uh, plants are being grown. Uh, this is uh, like the NASA is also trying to grow these vegetables uh, in space also. So they are also doing a lot of research in aquaponics and hydroponic systems. So uh, the water required for this uh, are being supplied using the aquacultural waste water, uh, treated, treated aquacultural waste water. Then uh, this also we, we can see here there is an aquaculture farm and these are the vertical, far, vertical uh, farming systems. So all these plants are being supplied with the water from the fish pond here. Here also we can see the commercially available fish ponds. From this we are supplying the water, or this uh, farmers are supplying the water to the green walls available here. So these are the uh, plants where the water is being supplied from these ponds. Uh, these are the case cases of uh, in India, uh, these are mostly the farms because this uh, aquaponics farms are very famous in Kerala. Okay, there is one uh, village in Kerala called as uh, Cherai. This village is uh, like in 2016 itself, it is declared as uh, the aquaponics village. So, uh, all the farmers in this village are practicing these aquaponics systems and they are gaining a lot of profit. Uh, here also, we can see there is this is one uh, BBA graduate. He is uh, instead of going for the job, he has started the aquaponic system. This is his fish pond and the uh, crop culture is uh, backside of uh, this uh, young boy. So, uh, this business is very profitable if you are uh, uh, trying to have trying to have some business in uh, uh, field of agriculture. Uh, so there are lots of advantages of this system. This is uh, the same water is being used for all the systems, like growing the fish also and for uh, cultivating the crop also. The efficiency is more than like 90% uh, water, 90 to 95% water is saved. Only water is consumed for the transpiration uses of fish and for the transpiration uses of plants. Only there the water is used, which is very minute amount of water is being actually consumed in the system. All the water is continuously being circulated. So water saving is very high in the system. Then uh, using the same amount of water, the two types of product, products uh, are being uh, developed. That is fish products and vegetables or uh, our crop. So uh, water productivity of this uh, aquaponic system is very high as compared to our conventional field uh, scale systems or uh, you can say hydrophonic system. Uh, the vegetables grown here are very healthier, they are bigger in size if you are maintaining properly. Then uh, artificial fertilizers are needed very less here because most all the fertilizers are uh, being taken from this aquaculture farms. Some micronutrients if needed, iron, boron, that type of micronutrients so only you have to add there. Uh, then uh, there is like uh, there, uh, there was very much problem of disposing aquaculture waste water, which is now being used in aquaculture system. So then this problem is uh, this problem got solved. Uh, then uh, we can say uh, less and marginal quality land is required. There is no much high quality land or high quality soil is needed for growing in the crop. Uh, even the, 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 this is not related to land and soil because we are not using the uh, soil for growing the crop. So uh, we can grow the crop at any soil and land conditions. Uh, even on terrace also we can grow the crop. Uh, easier to set up, uh, very easy to set up. It's very or it's organic. We are not using any external fertilizers and pesticides there. It's very organic. Uh, reduced damage due to plant pests and diseases. If it is uh, grown in polyoses, we can avoid these pests and diseases there. As it is no no soil is used, there is no problem of weeding. Uh, we will get very highly nutritious food uh, every day, uh, like fishes and vegetables, and it attracts the tourist. If it is established in uh, villages, it attracts the tourist, uh, so it supports the agriculture tourism also. Uh, limitations are it is expensive. The greenhouse is needed uh, if you have if you want to have very good quality produce. Uh, setup is uh, like very technological knowledge is needed here, and every day you have to uh, take care of your plant like a baby, a fish and so uh, you have to take care of like a baby. So uh, it is very uh, crucial to take care of all the system daily. Uh, water quality is very 
or important here so it is monitored it has to be monitored daily uh, because it affects the fish and if fish is getting affected the whole system collapses so water you have to test it daily uh, then it, it needs uh, electrical energy continuously uh, so if you want to avoid this electrical energy problem you have to go for solar power uh, because it is a recirculating system where the water will be flowing continuously uh so uh, there is also need of provide to fish in the system all these things are limitations but if you see the advantages of the system the productivity is very high uh, the efficiency of water use or resource use is very high you get very highly marketable products you can export the produce if it is maintained if it is cultivated properly you can export the produce you get very high income uh, using the system then Uh, if suppose one system fails, that is crop fails, the fishes are there for uh, market. If fish system fails, crops are there for market. So any one or both uh, produce can be marketed. So it is like in case of like uh, if you see in market view, it is safer than uh, the mono uh, culture system, single culture system. Okay, so these are the limitations of the system. Uh, if you see the future phase, what the future phase here? Uh, nowadays, lots of research are going on to optimize the system. Uh, there is uh, like uh, uh, R RPA, that is uh, robotic process automation, is going on. Uh, then we have uh, they are using some researchers are using IoT here. Uh, lots of researchers are going on to standardize the systems, and uh, these systems can work as a startup business area uh, ideas for the newly graduated. Uh, You can say students, young uh, students who are uh, go, who are planning to start the business is very good opportunity. The government is providing a lot of funds to establish the facilities, so uh, the young friends, young students, they can go for uh, this system. Uh, we get the funds from the government. We get a very good system. The first two to three years are crucial to gain the experience, to gain the market, and future is yours. So with this. Uh, uh, I will uh, stop my uh, uh, today's webinar session. Uh, if you have any questions and queries regarding this uh, uh, webinar, you please uh, ask me the queries and questions. Uh, I think uh, now the session is uh, um, can be handed over to the organizers for uh, announcement of further announcements. So please, organizers, please. Okay, there are some questions. Uh, I will answer both questions. One question is: Should we recycle the water in a tank, or same can be kept uh, throughout the cultivation? Yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, in case of uh, aquaponic system, there is no need of changing the water. If your system or biofilters or the clarifi clarifiers are working perfectly, uh, there is no change, of, no need of changing the water. Same water can be separated from fish pond to uh, aqua uh, hydroponic system through the filtration system. And uh, if the hydroponic system is very efficient, it will capture all the nutrients from the crop uh, by the crop, and uh, the nutrient-free water will, uh, which is very much uh, more toxic water. Will again go back to uh, aquaculture farm. So there is no need of uh, replacing the water. If uh, due to some uh, due to some uh, we can say evaporation, some sort of uh, reduction in water level in aquaculture farm, just only top up you have to do. That's all. So that's why it is uh, even efficiency is above ninety five percent. Very high amount of water being saved. Here. Uh, I hope uh, I have uh, justified the question uh, by the answer. Okay, so uh, this is very. Uh, there is one more question by uh, Pradeep. Uh, what is the minimum investment needed uh, for the farmer? Okay, uh, very good question. Uh, because uh, every farmer will uh, see the investment before going for any system. So uh, even I have constructed one system in our university. Uh, this is uh, like uh, I took this is one uh, 20 meter by 20 meter uh, uh, shed net I have constructed. In that I have two systems of uh, 
400 plant per system. So 800 plants uh, for two systems plus 100 fish. All these systems uh, it took around uh, one lakh uh, seventy to eighty thousand for me. And even uh, for erecting these polyhouses or shed nets, uh, the farmers are getting subsidies. So the cost of uh, system, including subsidy, will be very less. Okay. And this cost, uh, as per the calculations, we have done some calculations, and this cost will uh, be, we can say, uh, it will be recovered within uh, two to three seasons because we are growing very high value products like lettuce and which will be sold in uh, five star hotels mostly so it will uh, have a lot of uh, values for the produces which are generated from that uh, yes nabar uh, if, uh, if you are graduate uh, if you are provided if you are agriculture graduate the nabar is uh, definitely they are uh, financing for uh, this type of projects already they are uh, giving some subs uh, even uh, loans for the farmers for erecting those who are not getting subsidies uh, the farmers are uh, given the loans by the NABAR uh, you can just clarify with, with the offices NABAR office you can, you have, I think you have to propose one like project like uh, there is a format for that so to apply for the, uh, that format and you will get the loan for that uh, okay there is one question uh, uh, for young starter in aquaponics are there any government aided subsidies okay uh, actually uh, uh, subsidies are not there at present uh, but uh, there are lots of schemes by the government uh, uh, for the young entrepreneurs and uh, there are additional uh, benefits in terms of interest for the farmers okay so you can apply through that you will get lot, uh, almost I think 25 lakh rupees are uh, uh, per young entrepreneur is given by the government okay with very low, low interest so we can go for that if you are interested to start a business uh, uh, this business is very much uh, we can say profitable business uh, and it is the future of Indian agriculture not only aquaponics this high tech agriculture is the future of Indian agriculture uh, so you can go for uh, this type of highly profitable uh, commercial agriculture rather than the conventional agriculture and always de uh, being dependent on the government okay, you can start your own uh, things you will get definitely you will get the uh, uh, returns with or you can uh, you can uh, you can nullify your whatever uh, uh, investments within one or two years that is for sure uh, I hope uh, I have answered the questions uh, regarding the opponents. If you have any uh, questions, you please uh, ask me the questions so that I can clarify. Uh, thank you, sir. I request all the participants to uh, fill in so the feedback the, form that is available in the description. Uh, and based on this, we will provide e certificate within two or three days. In respected guest speaker, Dr. Prasad S. Kulkarni, and uh, all the participants, I, on behalf of the uh, Department of Agriculture Engineering, KIT, Kalinga Karnanadi Institute of Technology, I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the honorable guest speaker, speech on this exemplary speech and took out valuable time of your uh, busy schedule and i must thank our participants for their presence i thank our management for their support and i thank principal vice principal hod's deans for uh, for mentoring us and i thank faculty members technical team and volunteers for their enhanced support once again i thank all for this wonderful session thank you all Thank you, sir.